the computer. Okay, about organizing. We already mentioned about organizing uh, just briefly in our previous uh, slide. And organizing itself or organization is one big, big, big topic. You can read a book, so take books about organizational structure, control, culture, etc., etc. So meaning to say this is a big thing that uh, you can zoom in, but we just simply going to uh, uh, to focus on briefly what is organizational is all about. Okay. Uh, in our, I think even in our first, um, maybe second topic with regard to project management, I already show you this uh, diagram. This is the the important diagram in our class where everything is inside here. So again, I just simply repeat uh, the middle uh, circle there uh, is basically our uh, objective in managing construction project. Uh, we can refer to uh, triple, triple constraint time cost quality or sometime in certain variation, they call it time cost scope. Okay, but in normal literature, uh, this is what we call triple constraint. But you can add more in terms of uh, safety and health, uh, what we call uh, uh, legal requirement, and then environment. And then we need uh, um, resources, five M's. And we start with the management process. In order to manage project, okay, we start with the planning, and then we do have organizing. And then other things, leading, directing, evaluating, control, etc., etc. This is just to name a few. And the word organizing is here. See? Organizing is here. So, designing organizational structure. What does structure uh, really reflect? Structure meaning to say relationship, the branches. When you look at the organizational chart, you just notice that uh, certain people are being put in a certain uh, vertical line, horizontal line, and then they are interconnected with uh, others for, for reason. They just simply do not put into organization just to show that, oh, okay, this is the people. No, no, no. They are being divided. They are being structured in such manner in order to show the relationship between um, what we call the unit that they are managing and the work that they uh, basically have to uh, focus in, etc., etc. And when we design those organizational structures, they are elements that we basically refer to. Example, we basically look at, this is just uh, uh, a list, uh, list four things, but actually there are many more environmental uh, issue. Environmental issue meaning to say the situation that reflect the organization. Let's say during the COVID situation, uh, we might want to restructure our workforce because, uh, well, sometimes the issue of cost, we might want to scale down our organization. We do not want to close the organization, but basically, uh, scale down in order to re-delegate the work according to whoever uh, basically uh, people who really need to get the organization run okay because of the situation so the environment basically referred to situation current condition number two is the technology involved sometimes technology can change many 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 things example now we are using more technology in terms of ICT a lot nah? in uh, teaching, in whatever thing. You, we have seen, for instance, banking industry. Technology have uh, basically changed the scenario of banking industry. Long time ago, we do have a human being as a teller. Now, they are being replaced by ATM, automated teller machine. Previously, people who are basically have to cater when you want to draw even 10 ringgit, then you have to line up. Now those things are being replaced by all the automation. 
similarly, maybe in the construction later on, if we use IBS a lot, so meaning to say we do not need a lot of people anymore. Okay, everything being done in the factory, and then we need just a little bit of uh, what we call logistic in terms of uh, transportation. Then we do need uh, only a few people to uh, get the thing connected at the construction site. You see, those things will change the way we organize our people and maybe we are going into a, a scaling down the organization. Human resource. Sometimes when you want to uh, delegate the work, you have to look at who is available, who basically available in your organization. Organizations such as UTM, because we are government, uh, we do not basically fire people. And we do not fight people easily as uh, the, the private sector do. And then we have to work with uh, whoever around. If you do not like that person, then basically you have to work with that person because uh, the issue nowadays, even the government, they do not hire uh, new people anymore as frequent as before because the uh, cost cutting measure. So whether we like it or not, whoever left in the organization, that is the person that we have to deal with. So meaning to say, putting people based on whoever, whoever, uh, whoever are available. And then strategy. Strategy is the way uh, we basically organize our workforce in order to achieve our uh, KPI. Sometimes KPI could be changing due to the changing nature of the industry or the situation. So what kind of strategy for us uh, in order to remain competitive? If you do not change your strategy, at the end of the day, you are going to lose to your competi uh, competitor and then suddenly you are disappearing, uh, disappear from the radar. People in the uh, uh, mobile phone industry, because it is very stiff, uh, what we call uh, what we call uh, industry where sometimes new player come into the market and eating up your market share. Previously, uh, Samsung was enjoying a big piece of the market share, but now the market share is getting uh, eaten up by the Chinese uh, Vivo, Oppo and whatnot, Huawei bit by bit. Okay, that is the, the example of a uh, competitor. So you must strategize yourself, even your workforce. Efficiency factor, okay. Your organizational structure depend very much on these factors such as coordination, okay. Coordinated effort. Even though you uh, divide people according to section, unit, department, etc., etc., you must understand they are working as one team. So there must be interaction among themselves in order to fulfill your uh, vision and uh, basically uh, vision and uh, objective. And then definition, define role and responsibility. Often time, when you divide people according to section, you do not delegate them and give them a list of uh, responsibility, what to do. So everybody get uh, blur on what basically is my job. Why do am I, uh, I, I am being put, put in this section for what reason? Okay, that is not clear. So you must define role and responsibility. And then power. Certain people are giving a certain authority or power for them to get things moving. Uh, normally the boss will get uh, some kind of authority in order to sign check, in order to give approval on certain certain things. So you must define who basically have certain authority. You do not want to let all, everybody have authority to sign, leave or whatever in terms of making decision. And then balancing, balancing meaning to say, oftentimes people uh, often complain uh, that he or she is getting more work compared to the other people. So this is not good in organization. So you try to uh, balance between the work, uh, what we call burden, workload. 
so that everybody feel that they contribute equally and uh, they will get the payment according to what uh, being uh, given to them in terms of workload. Supervision. Supervision meaning to say uh, people on the top layers, this is like a boss, okay, and then you have what we call uh, many uh, first line uh, manager, whatnot, and then you will have people, and then you will have sub sub people. So, this is what we call uh, your supervisor, even though your position could be manager, engineer, etc. But when you have the, your subordinate, what does subordinate mean? Sub subordinate means people who are under you. So, when you have people under you, then you become so called supervisor. You supervise their work, you give them instruction. So, you know, basically, your subordinate have to report to you. So, they must understand who to report to. And then, what is your function as supervisor? What kind of monitoring? What kind of things that you require from them? That is basically the concept. And even this guy, can be a supervisor to people who are below them. That is the concept of supervisor, meaning to say people who, are, who is above somebody else and then you have people under you that you need to control, then automatically you are being considered as supervisor. Okay. Mode of organizational structure. Okay. When we talk about organizational structure, you can Google organizational structure. They could many, 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 many different types, especially when we talk about tall organization, flat organization, and then etc. etc. This is just the naming of organization. But in our class, we are going to focus on the main organizational structure, namely functional, project, metric, and then hybrid. Okay. Hybrid is simply when you modify whatever uh, based on functional or even project or even metrics that's what we call hybrid it is like the hybrid uh, car when hybrid car is being named you, uh, the only differences between hybrid car and then the the original car maybe they, sometimes they put different logo with a blue color whatever and then they modify a little bit in terms of engine so that they do have what we what we call electric motors but the rest are basically remain the same. See, uh, some modification. So, how to read this slide? Okay, how to read this slide? When you uh, focus on functional organizational structure, you must be able to uh, tell us or imagine what is the organizational structure in terms of graphic looks like. This is the example of the graphic. Okay. How to draw this type of organization, organizational structure. This is the most common organizational structure that can be found anywhere. It can be applied to any organization where this is the boss. Uh, the boss can be named in, uh, by many, many different names. Sometimes it could be chairman, it could be CEO, general manager, whatever. Okay, Let's assume this is a CEO, then of course, you might have a functional manager. It could be functional manager as a human resource manager. It could be finance manager. It could be a planning manager. And it could be uh, many more manager, maybe named contract department or procurement department. Procurement. Name is by the function. Function meaning to say what uh, uh, what is this uh, department or section is doing? Okay, for instance, human resource manager, all the people inside this department, unit, section, you just name it, they are doing everything with regard to uh, the function of human resource. They do not encroach into uh, other works. They do not do the finance thing. Finance thing belong to this department. Everything about finance, so those people are doing. And a bit, everything about planning is uh, basically belong to, to this unit. And everything is about procurement, contract, tender, belong to this unit. That is why this is being called functional 
according to the function of that organization. Okay. So you must be able to draw or imagine how the functional organizational structure looks like. And then you must know the characteristic of uh, this organizational structure. Example, being practiced by government or even big organization. Big or even small, okay? Big meaning to say organizational uh, organi organizations such as Boeing, NASA, big, big corporation basically employ this kind of organizational structure. Why? Because it serves some function, okay? It serves some function. Vertical line of command, top to bottom. What does this thing mean? See, vertical here. The big boss will uh, give you instruction and then the, uh, the middle boss or the bottom boss, whatever, will pass that thing to the people under, under the unit. Feedback from bottom to top. Feedback is the other way around. Because most of the time, people who are at the bottom of organization, this is what we call operation. They are doing the works. So they know what are the problem and they will give feedback to their immediate boss and that immediate boss will basically relay the information to the, uh, to the above, uh, the immediate boss and then subsequently going to the uh, managers and then managers relay the information to the CEO, for instance. Okay, that's what we call feedback. Rigid organizational structure. Okay, rigid meaning to say, this type of organization do not change a lot because their function might be the same. Every day they are doing the same thing. Repeated again and again. Example, for instance, UTM. UTM, our, our focus is basically uh, uh, education. We do, not have, uh, we do not have product as in the, uh, uh, for instance, Samsung. Samsung do produce product, handphone, television, uh, computer, etc., etc. Okay, but our product is basically the uh, knowledge. We are developing talent. Okay, people who are talented in terms of knowledge, skill, with regard to certain certain things. So we are in the so-called creative industry. Creative industry, uh, developing the uh, the human resource. Okay, so every day our work is basically similar. So that that's why we do not change so much in terms of our structure, organizational structure. Similarly, government, government of Malaysia, for instance, use this type of uh, organizational structure. Why? If you uh, notice, we in Malaysia, federal government, we do have prime minister, okay, the highest authority in terms of the uh, running government. And then even uh, prime minister do have uh, department, do have minister, deputy minister, and uh, uh, a few people working under that department alone. But then we do have what we call Ministry, Ministry of Defense as one function, headed by minister. And then all the people, we do have a Ministry of Education, we, have, we do have Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Human Resource, Ministry of Defense, etc., etc. You see? So that's why they call functional. Functional because all those uh, people under Ministry of Education, they do have many, many divisions under their department doing the same thing. They do not in involve with the finance. In fact, the money that they need to run that kind of uh, ministry is coming from finance department. They need to request. Of course, uh, budget will be set aside to run the organization and the budget will be released accordingly in order for the debt minister to run according to what they already plan. Okay, that's the example. Okay, among these uh, organiza organization, they do have what we call advantages and disadvantages, pro and con. Pro and con uh, among organizational structure is uh, basically reflect that type of organizational structure. That's why we do have different type of organizational structure because they might be suited uh, to a certain organization, whereas it might not be suitable to a different organization. So you can choose uh, which one is basically suited to your organization, okay? Pro and con. This pro and con is uh, part and parcel of uh, uh, 
uh, when we introduce any organizational structure, they might not be perfect, but at least it, it is best uh, for that organization. For instance, prob problematic functional unit division department could be easily identified and tackled. Okay, when you divide the organization according to section, unit, etc. So, and the workflow will go according to the uh, vertical command, horizontal command. You will pinpoint uh, which unit basically uh, the problem gets stuck with. And then you try to tackle, okay? Try to focus on problematic unit. And by doing that, basically you will have the whole uh, workflow running smoothly again. And experience, knowledge, and uh, experience among individuals can be exchanged and consolidated. And this is perhaps why organizations such as and Boeing, NASA use this, this kind of functional organization. Why? They want a pool of uh, expert. Okay. Just imagine if, for instance, you are being hired as engineer doing specific work in that particular unit, and you will be working in that unit for many, many years, doing the same thing again and again. For sure, over a long period of time, you will become expert in that particular field. So when we combine people who are expert in this field and that field uh, and whatnot, and in one organization, you basically have a, a basically pool of uh, resources, okay? pool of resources we can uh, when you uh, integrate those um, expert together they can have they can contribute significantly to the development of certain certain product that is the concept individual position in Karepan and functional unit are clear of course if you are working with government as engineer let's say you graduate uh, with your bachelor degree and then you get a job with government JKR you will start your salary scheme uh, in JKR with uh, what we call J41. This is a starting salary. You see, J, J means engineer, Jurutra. Okay, then you will go up the ladder, J44, 48, and then 51, 54, and then you will get your JUSA. JUSA meaning to say is equivalent to like professor. And even JUSA also do have different, different skill. Okay. So just imagine if you start with J41, you wanted to go up the ladder or basically the uh, uh, promotion, you need to do certain things. You basically remain in your line, but just a matter of KPI and then matter of uh, how many things that you need to do. So you already know your career path. If you want to go up the ladder very fast, then basically there are things that you need to do, but you know your, 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 your what we call carry pass uh, according to the line. You, you just simply cannot cross the line. Okay? You simply cannot cross the line. Okay, just uh, wait a second. I need to... Okay, uh, we continue. Sorry for some disturbance. Okay, so that's why uh, in functional organization, because the organization remain rigid, do not change much, at the end of the day, you will know your career path. Okay, career path where you are heading. Strict work ethic and discipline are upheld using uh, by the organization using all kind of rule and regulation, okay? So that's why uh, organization like uh, government servant, government servant in Malaysia do hire around one point, maybe 1.2 million, just imagine. Uh, whether we, you are working with government, you are working in other, uh, 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 what we call uh, university, school, etc., etc. we are all government servant. We get the same salary, okay? We get the same bonus. And then they, how to basically handle 1.2 million people, okay? So that's why in government, there are rule and regulation. If you go against rule and regulation, 
you can be reprimanded. You can get uh, what we call um, uh, in uh, government servant, you can be called by your boss, okay? And then you will go through all kind of what, whatever disciplinary board and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Otherwise, uh, if things, if certain people are not being um, uh, reprimanded or get some kind of punishment and then other people will follow, okay? So rule and regulation are uh, very strict in uh, managing this kind of workforce because it can grow very big. Okay, disadvantages. Disadvantages, among the disadvantages, member of the functional unit could be seen to promote self-interest. Uh, that's why in this kind of organization, because they are being um, drawn in such a way, vertical mostly, with many, many level and layers, and each of the unit will have their immediate boss. And uh, sometimes the boss will promote himself. And that's why the boss will go up into the ladder very fast compared to the people who are working. Okay. Uh, this, this is issue because the promotion might be limited in terms of numbers. Slow feedback. People who are basically having some kind of problem try to report to the boss. And then the, the immediate boss will bring this thing, this matter to the, the, the second immediate boss and whatnot. Sometimes it will go into layers and layers. And sometimes the issue will not be reported to the top management due to the fact that the immediate boss wanted to hide the things in order to portray the image that everything is running smoothly in his unit. That could be the issue. But nowadays, that's why we do have Facebook, we do have Twitters, we do have the viral thing that people can just simply report and just imagine, uh, just imagine things can get faster. Uh, then things can get faster when you report to the internet compared to the proper channel. Fair resources allocation. Uh, okay, for instance, we in UTM, we do have many faculties, many schools, everybody is fighting to have a big chunk of the budget or money in order to run the school because every school have their own KPI. So just imagine people who are very close to the boy, big boss, for instance, maybe will get uh, the fund faster or more so that they can run the school uh, in a better, uh, much more efficiency. At the end of the day, the KPI will increase and then that guy will get promoted as easy as that. Okay. Individual need could not be met easily. Yeah, because there are so many people in that organization, whereas the promotion might be limited. So, and it will cause a lot of frustration uh, all over the places. That's why you see sometimes even government officers, they, they look like they are very lazy. Well, if you know what is happening, it is not to say they are lazy. They are just basically not motivated because most of the time, uh, they work very hard, okay? But the one that get promotion might be different people. Different people meaning to say, the one that work with the boss will get everything. Where you uh, work hard and you are not dealing with the boss, you will get basically nothing. That could be the issue. Okay, number two, project. Or in, um, in uh, certain terminology, as being mentioned in Project Management Institute, they use the terminology as projectize. Okay, projectize organizational structure. But for the sake of this uh, slide, we just simply project organizational structure, which is best suited uh, to the construction company, actually. Okay, we are managing a construction project. So just imagine, the, the project organizational structure do have what we call the functional organizational structure here, maybe in the headquarters. If you, are, you have been working with contractor, then you can imagine this is the type of the uh, contractor uh, organizational structure where contractor do have uh, headquarters somewhere, somewhere in, in the town or whatever. Okay. In the headquarters, 
they are being divided according to functional manager as similar to uh, functional organizational structure. But then, but then, contractor survive based on the project that basically they have. Maybe the project is based in JB. And then you repeat this thing, project based in KL, maybe project based in IPO, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And each of the project site, this is what we call project site, okay, will have the organizational structure, uh, we call it functional, uh, functional, similar to the headquarters that repeat after itself. In the headquarters, we do have human resource. We do have uh, what we call financial. We do have planning. We do have what we call uh, procurement. And at the construction site, uh, there are people from the headquarters or they can hire contract staff that do the same function. Uh, the same function as if in the headquarters. Why? Because at the construction site, they need to hire people also. So you do not want to every time call the headquarters people and asking here and do all the uh, paperwork letter and whatnot in order to hire people at the construction site. If you do that, it will take forever and ever. Whereas construction site, every decision has to be to be made fast because people can come to the construction site directly to get hired, to get interview, etc. And then you just uh, might be a clerk there or some kind of officer. If the project is too small, maybe you have one person acting as the clerk in order to make decision based on human resource. And then, of course, you need people who are doing some kind of financial work in order to make payment to supplier, to uh, workers, to uh, subcon, uh, very fast. And then, et cetera, et cetera. You know what? Project manager, okay? Project manager will be given sufficient authority, power authority in order to make decision. Okay, just imagine, if you are manager, human resource manager in the headquarters, you do not have the ability to sign any check, to release any payment. Whatever payment has to be released in uh, the by or oh, by the what we call finance, finance department. But when you act as a project manager, you basically are entrusted with certain authority. You can sign check, you can just simply uh, give payment, allow payment. So the project basically uh, can do or can make decision, but decision could be limited because otherwise there could be an audit issue, whatever. But again, project manager have that kind of power because otherwise if for instance, project manager have to ask permission from the headquarters and then it could be very late and then the project could be running very slow due to the bureaucratic delays. So that is why uh, project organizational structure are being designed in order for the project manager to uh, make decision fast and then all the expertise uh, being put at the construction project or project site, they can work uh, better coordinate work in order to achieve whatever the project objective. But again, there could be advantages and disadvantages. Okay. Project manager authority is wider, meaning to say he is being entrusted with some kind of authority to make fast decision. That is the nature of a project organizational structure. Okay, you want to make decision very fast, that but then you need to sacrifice on something. What are the something that could be found in the disadvantages? All unit department report to project manager. Yes, in term of people at the uh, at the site eh? okay report to project manager but then project manager have to report to whom either ceo or we could have one person that we call general managers usually in any organization where there are so many managers around then the position as a general manager could be created okay otherwise there is no need uh, people can report directly to CEO, then basically that organization can save some costs with regard not uh, hiring any uh, general managers. 
integration among expertise are effective for sure in this type of organization uh, things are very dynamic uh, when you uh, do the construction uh, project uh, every day is a changing activities so you must get things fast coordination and then all resources basically catered toward achieving the project objective but they are without the uh, what we call uh, any issue there are a lot of issue coming up due to this nature of project first uh, usage uh, of resources are not optimized meaning to say you need to duplicate whatever thing that you already have at the headquarters you need to duplicate in order to run your project smoothly even you need to bring the uh, the system you need to bring the computer you already have the computer at the headquarters but you need to purchase different computer in order to be used at the construction site okay so that's why you are not going to optimize on the uh, resources but again uh, the issue is that you want to reduce the timing timing is more important in this nature of uh, work environment allocation responsibility could be overlooked where when you move around a uh, construction project from one construction project to another sometimes people get transferred okay people get transferred to another project site and then the project manager tend to re-delegate the work uh, this is when um, the allocation of responsibility might not be balanced okay individual must show to a new project manager that they are relevant what is this point sometime project manager uh, himself could be changing okay could be changing from one project to another sometime project manager come into the project uh, and then they will bring their own team it is like a football coach you know when they are being hired or being transferred from one football club to another he will bring even players and then his own team from the uh, the previous uh, club along with him what happened to the people who are already at that club maybe may, may maybe they are being kicked out so you must prove to the project manager that you are still relevant you remain at that particular project okay otherwise you are being kicked out of the uh, project site and lastly is a matrix organizational structure metric organization organizational structure is the combination of functional plus project in one organization okay in one organization maybe this uh, uh, this drawing will basically uh, make you uh, more understand about how we integrate the functional and then the project in one project okay remember uh, in a project ties organizational structure we do have functional manager this is what we call functional functional manager for the material functional manager for the financial purchasing admin etc etc and they uh, their people will basically be reflected in a vertical uh, delegation of works but then but then you see you notice this line we do have project manager project manager a b c whatever name that work under the same project what we call the same project same project that is the keyword same project unlike the uh, project ties uh, uh, organizational structure the project basically belong to different project project in jb ipo and kl basically in different locality different location but now how about if you integrate the project project manager into the same work environment meaning to say if for instance we want to develop a big area such as KLIA airport okay this is an example of KLIA airport when they developed the first KLIA project way back in 1995-1996 basically they used matrix organizational structure 
because the piece of land is very big and then in that piece of land they do have different different structure building uh, unit etc to be constructed and we can use this kind of metric organization structure similarly if you want to develop big campus such as utm we can use the same thing if we want to develop whatever school uh, what we call whatever the um, the big big um, what we call a development area that consists of many 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 different facility inside the area or even in uh, your idp project in your idp project you have big piece of land inside that piece of land you have many 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 things to be constructed as you already planned so you can use this uh, metric organizational structure so how to do that okay remember uh, in metric organizational structure the functional functional is here and then plus project okay project 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 the project part is we, we call it uh, the vertical whereas the functional is the uh, no, sorry, project part we call it horizontal. Uh, functional part is what we call it vertical. That's how we arrange those things in this line. And this indicates when those lines is intersect, this basically we call it matrix. So that's how the name of this organizational structure come from. Matrix organizational structure. The dotted line is basically the dot matrix. As in the case of KLIA, long time ago, what happened is that, just imagine, in KLIA, they do need site preparation work. Runaway and apron area, central area, they call it perimeter road, utilities, air traffic service, southern support area, etc. Because all those areas you need to, to do the construction. Okay? Repeated again and again, because everything needs to be completed. Okay, so this is what we call functional. Functional, they call it service, but we can say vertical one is basically functional, whereas the hori uh, horizontal one is what we call uh, project. And you notice that the horizontal one, site development and control, uh, survey, health and safety, document control, procurement control, planning, quality assurance, and administration. In all those uh, area, for sure, all those area need site development and survey. So, meaning to say, this project manager, project manager, they are, they do have team that is uh, basically the team is doing all kind of work related to site development and survey. And the people uh, functional manager in all those area, what they need to do is simply ask. Okay, this, let's say the apron area, will tell the project manager handling the survey, okay, I want the survey team to survey my area maybe next week because we are going to start a work, earthwork after that. And then also, people in the perimeter road also need survey. You see, the purpose of this kind of metric organizational structure is basically to pull the resources together pull the resources together, meaning to say all those resources that being handled by project manager for certain certain category of work will be shared among the people in different area. Okay, so meaning to say, let's say survey, survey do have the team and then one day these people will require the service of those people working or doing some kind of survey. Similarly, they will cater for the people in the central area, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, this, is, this is why we call it metric. So, uh, project manager have to cater to different, different area, and maybe they are using the same resources. So, if that resources is not being used in that particular area, then they can move that resources into different area. In such a way, they basically, um, uh, this is what we call pool resources, pool resources, share resources among different, different uh, area. So functional manager focus on uh, 
vertical, uh, what we call um, vertical line, whereas project manager focus on the horizontal line. Okay. Among uh, the advantages, utilization of resources become more uh, what we call integrated. We do not waste resources. Okay. You don't have to hire different different people, different subcontractor to do the work. You just simply uh, hire just one organization or subcontractor that will do all the survey work uh, among all different areas. Accurate, fast delivery of information because the information are being uh, uh, what we call designed in such a way they are being shared among the same organization. Okay. Promote expansion of individual expertise and whatnot. You know what? The advantages found in functional plus project is being combined together. So in such a way, they make a perfect, uh, perfect what we call balance of uh, uh, advantages compared to disadvantages. What could be the disadvantages? Dual reporting. When you are working at this dot, for instance, you are working at this dot, basically you have two boss on, uh, on top of you. You need to report the, to the, uh, what we call functional boss. And then you need also to report to project manager. Okay, you have two boss. Meaning to say, you have two reporting to do. Conflict could arise where people in different area are trying to get things uh, done very quickly and they will ask you to work uh, uh, in, your, in their work area uh, first compared to other, other people. So meaning to say, Everybody is trying to get your resources uh, quickly to their workplace because they do have their own KPI to show to the big, big, big director or whatnot. Okay, in such a way, that could be an issue. All right. And out of this um, metric organizational structure, then uh, come this, what we call terminology. Strong metrics, weak metrics, and balanced metrics. Balance metric could be the one that we are looking at, but we never know. Sometimes the project manager could have more influence. So the name basically uh, being identified as a strong metrics. When you have functional manager is a uh, more dominant, that's what we call weak metric. Uh, either situation, balance metric could be the best that we want. Okay, but sometimes it doesn't work that way. And for sure, sometimes uh, organizational structure could be um, could be uh, structured in such a way they call it geographic, product, and etc. This is just uh, extra, uh, uh, additional information. Sometimes uh, global organization are being divided or being structured, being designed according to their product. For instance, could be Samsung. Samsung, Panasonic, where they produce many, many uh, household uh, product. Uh, one division basically called washing machine division, lighting, television, smartphone, and etc. etc. And among those units could have their own uh, organizational structure that cater to specific need of that uh, organizational structure. And then again, some organization could be divided or could be designed according to geographic. Maybe in Malaysia, for instance, sometimes uh, we, we take example as the CIDB, for instance, CIDB office. The main headquarters is in the Wilayah Piskutuan or KL. That's what we call uh, the uh, uh, middle of uh, West Malaysia. We do have the northern part in Penang. We do have the southern branch in Johor Bahru, and we do have the uh, uh, East uh, Peninsula Malaysia in uh, Kuala Terengganu, and we do have one in uh, Sabah and then Sarawak. Okay, so they are being divided according to region. Okay, all right, so that's it about the uh, organizational chart. What you need to understand. Uh, organizational uh, structure can be designed 
in such a way to reflect the what basically the organization uh, nature of work they are being divided according to section unit department you just that is just simply naming why in order to delegate the work uh, that we already decide during the planning stages and then uh, when we delegate uh, people according to whatever the structure that we design they are being attached with some role and responsibilities authority they need to basically coordinate the work so that the objective of organization uh, can be uh, basically uh, uh, can be achieved huh? that is the uh, purpose of organizing putting people under certain certain uh, design in order to get things done otherwise huh, when you do not put people under structure organiz uh, organizational structure you do not know whether that particular unit has sufficient people or not sometimes it could be redundant people are doing the same thing uh, two unit doing the same thing why don't we merge that unit then only you can know you can see whether your organizational structure is sufficient or not you might need a new uh, extra people or contract staff or you can basically uh, re-delegate people to certain unit which basically require more manpower compared to the other units okay that is the purpose of organizational structure we do have three main organizational structure uh, in our slide basically, namely functional uh, project ties or project and then metrics what about hybrid hybrid is just simply when you modify the functional organizational structure or metrics or project then basically those things being called hybrid okay just a little bit modification of the main uh, organizational structure there could be more type of organizational structure around if you google but we are not going to cover everything just to give you concept that uh, uh, people uh, when you hire people then they they must be put in a proper uh, basically structure so that uh, they can uh, function according to the role and responsibility being given to them okay so that's it for our uh, topic today